Yeah, so, you know, we were talking about coming into the tell and uh, how everything was changing. It seems so long ago we were talking about that, but it, it, we're coming so much closer to that now. And obviously I've got to start thinking about the uh, comrades now. And, um, I've got to start thinking about keeping my legs a little bit fresher now. I, I just, I, the Uruguay is a, it's a big thing about the journey along the way. And, you know, I wasn't sure would my body, you know, keep up with these guys in the bike. And I think it's, I surprised myself and what I'm able to do in that. Um, running. I don't know, I just don't know, and I don't know what to expect. I've been hearing so many good things about the comrades. These guys are all comrades disciples out here, and they're, they're, they're trying to sort of spread the word. But um, it's, 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 a, it's just so huge. So I ran my marathon, that's the furthest I've ever ran, and uh, I felt okay at the end of it. But are you asking me could I turn around and run another one? I don't know. So we're going to find out in a very few days. Well, I've been away from home for almost 10 days now. It's day seven of the Uruguaja. And uh, it's, been, it's been difficult. It's the longest I've been away from home, from, uh, away from my, from, from my wife. And uh, I have two stepsons, one son and, and, and a daughter. And uh, I try to communicate with them as, as much as possible. It's great to see that people back home are um, you know, thinking about me and it gives me strength to, to, to carry on. You know? Um, but overall, you know, it's, it's my wife that I miss the most and uh, uh, she said that uh, if you do this again, I'm going to have to come with you, so we'll see how things go in, in the future. Today's uh, the 29th of May and uh, it's my stepson's uh, birthday, 11, he's 11 years old. So Antonio, uh, Antonio, uma mensagem especial, muitos parabéns. And uh, I've also asked the, the group for, for a surprise. And um, I hope you, you enjoy it. So I uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Happy birthday, Mario! It's a lot of forest year around us. Um, and you can see the, a bit of the southern Drakensberg. So you can definitely sniff KZN and, and the finish line. It's been really cool uh, chatting to, to Savvy Will, the, the Irishman. Just um, explaining to him a little bit about the countryside and some Afrikaans definitions like kopi and donga. Rich has been talking to me a little bit about the Afrikaans and uh, trying to pick out a few different words and things along the way. And uh, I know a kopi is a little hill, uh, a donga, just in a, where a river or some winds eroded some land. And you've got like a wall in there where it's sort of create a little bit of a, a dip in there. So it looks like a little dried up riverbed but quite a steep drop off in there. So quite a lot of those, seen some of those early on today. Everyone knows me now, sick note. <laughs> if it's not my quads, it's my chafe. If it's not my chafe, it's, it's my knees. If it's not my knees, it's my lips. There's always something wrong with me. But yeah, not long to go. And then I believe we, we've got one crazy pass going either just before McClear or just after. But either or, just got to get over it. I mean, there's people out there with a lot worse than niggling little injuries. Guys with cancer, guys with AIDS, less fortunate. I mean. Riding through some of these places is actually a massive eye-opener. What we've got back home, got contact stuff like that for granted. We got hot water daily. I mean, you see what some of these people live like. It's it's quite sad. And just a heads up, if anyone's ever driving from Pretoria, Joburg, through to George, Neisner, wherever you go on holiday, stop and have a look around. We've got one crazy cool country. Landscapes are, are out of this world. Than getting up in the mornings, um, packing everything up, and getting on the road. Um, it's just at every stop we make sure that the guys are able to get back on their bikes again. So whether it's a Transac patch or a patch from somewhere else to manage a saddle saw or a quick rub, um, pat on the back, that kind of thing. Um, and that's pretty much it for the rest of the day. And then as soon as we get in, it's massage tables out, bodies on the beds, and sort out issues of the day. Well for us the biggest issue is to get them through the ride and to finish comrades. So with riding, uh, ITB is a, is a muscle that gets or a fascia piece that gets very tight uh, and that could get very very sore whilst running 90 k's. 
So although they might not feel it as much on the bike, we still need to assess it every night, make sure that it's going to be all right to, to get on the road and pound the tar for as long as they're going to.